Glenn, I love Jack Conway. But anyway, he said, the best thing that we have done in Conway and Company is this. He said, uh, and he said, I learned this on the CRB class. He said, we have a sales and listings board in our offices. And every time a person gets a listing, it's on that dry erase board, who it is and how much the listing is. And he said, we have a whole board full. And he said, we have another board that's nothing but sales and we do it the same way. He said, before we had that, nobody knew what anybody was doing. He said, the first month we put it up, we exceeded our goals. He said, and the reason is, is because everybody at least wanted to have their name on that board somewhere. He said, it worked so effectively, we put it in the coffee room. He said, we put, because everybody went, we wanted to put it in the bathrooms, but it wasn't big enough, so we just put it in the coffee room. He said, it has been phenomenal. So, being a young guy, I had a couple of offices. I went back, went over to Staples, bought a dry erase board. Carol and I spent Sunday afternoon with black tape. We had lines all over in columns and all of that. Went to the office Monday morning. When the agent showed up, the boards were there. Sales in one column, listing in the other. We had a sales meeting. I said, I guess you've been wondering what these boards are about. And I thought they were all going to quit the company. People said, well, how about if you don't get a listing? Well, 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 nothing's going to be up for you. <laughs> well, how about if you don't get a sale? Well, your name won't be on the board. Sales will not. Here's what we were not smart enough to do, though. We were not smart enough to take that and say, and what you need to do is to have sales and listing goals for every month. See, but I wasn't smart enough to realize that all month, months are not created equal. There are times in which you have the flu. So I'm going to have the flu in January. Am I going to sell as much as if I didn't have the flu? What is the answer to that? The answer is no, you're not. I'm going to take a vacation in June. Does that mean I'm going to get the same number of sales and listings in June on vacation as I would in May? Not being on vacation? No. So you have to kind of do a different plan. So let's go with that. Let me show it to you. It's right in your notes. Realize all months are not created equal. For example, where we live, typically in Virginia, the six best months a year to sell in are January through the end of June. Would you agree? In a typical year, that's when most sales volume takes place. And that does not mean that you blank the rest of the months, but that's where the volume is a little bit higher. So if I was doing a gold situation, and I had to do, say, 24 goals a year, I would probably have one in December, but I would have maybe three in January, February, and March, because that's when the market is hottest. So if I could get ahead of the game and do some business early on, I don't have to sweat out the end of the year. So your marketing may be stronger January, February, March, your activities may be stronger January, February, March, but having a great start may suit your schedule better. On the other hand, you may be totally different. Now, I know some people who their summer is better than their spring. And then you get into these years in which you get through March, and the market is just in the tank. Does it mean that the year is over? No, because what you didn't get in January, February, March, you accomplish when? April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Not December because everything written in December goes into the next year. You follow what I'm talking about? But by you sitting down now and saying, okay, I need 22 transactions. This is where I'm going to get them. Let's just do a hypothetical. Let's suppose you say, okay, I'm going to get three transactions in January. Well, in December, you better be having a plan as to how you're going to get them. Maybe you do some extra calling. Maybe you do some email newsletters. Maybe you get your email marketing cranked up a little bit more. Because just having it on a piece of paper with no action to back it up, you're just wasting your time. All you've done is wasted a piece of paper. The whole idea of you getting it on paper so you go through the process now, how is this going to happen? And I'm going to show you a list of sources in just a few minutes to make it a little bit easier on you. Number two, more production in the first half of the year 
than in the second half. I would tilt the first six months towards more production than I did in the last six months for lots of reasons, not the least of which is you get into some holiday season and by accomplishing more early on, it gives you a little bit more flexibility in the second half of the year when it takes some time off and all of that. Uh, next, make adjustments for planned and unplanned events. I mean, you just have to. For example, a planned event may be we're going to have vacation and we're going to be gone two weeks. Am I going to have the same amount of volume in June, gone two weeks, as I would have had I not been gone? And the answer to that is what? No. And what happens is you get to June and you've not had a good year. You may decide to postpone the vacation until I'm trouble when you can really enjoy it. You follow me? That way, you're in control of what's going on. You're not a victim of a marketplace. So, and you know, maybe you could sit. I mean, all of us have some of those spells, and you're, and you're not doing anything for a week. Are you going to accomplish as much in that month where you didn't work a week as you did if you had worked a week? The answer is no. But you can take the deal you didn't get in January and move it over to February. For example, I had a goal of three deals. I was going to write three contracts in January. I only wrote two. What I do with the one I didn't write? It's got to go somewhere. Are you with me? If you drop that down, goal setting is only in your month of planning is over. So you take the one you didn't get and you add it to February. And then you realize I'm way ahead of all. You could do two things. One, you could say, I'm not going to work as hard. Or you could say, you know what, this is a time to really make a little bit extra. Maybe I'm going to up the goals for the rest of the year. <laughs> By doing it that way, you take the mystery out of the year. It doesn't matter what Cambridge Road is. And then you say, I worked as hard as I could. And here's Leroy talking about doing 22 deals a year or 18 deals a year. I worked myself to death and I only did five last year. Yeah, but I heard you say that you get out of real estate again to a short sale. Maybe you need to think about it. That's what Carolyn said to me. If I had to do a short sale, I'd go to real estate. <laughs> so I was hanging around in the house one day. I was going to talk to these people. The bank had sent me to some people. Had to move it all house. They were thinking about something short. Carolyn says, uh, what are you doing today? We have a date every morning. Had a date this morning at 5 o'clock. She said, what are you doing today? I said, well, I'm going to the bank. They've got a person that had me back in some month or so. You know, and, and it's underwater, so they want me to talk about a short sale. She said, where's the house I told? I said, it's not a real big house, 950000 something like that. She got a little quiet. I just got one. Got my clothes. We got them all. She said, you know how to tag along? <laughs> she did 6% of 900000 54000 and then she calculated how much she was going to get. So kissing the toad, meaning taking a short sale, was worth it because what? The money was more. The money was more. The same thing happens when you do your goals for you. You do it because you want to accomplish this. Uh, next, I know what your numbers are. Now, here's the most important number that you know, and I can't help you calculate. I can tell you what it does, and I can tell you what it is, but I can't give you that number. Jimmy Cody I, who's the best salesperson I've ever met, and the smartest guy I've ever selling that I've ever known, he's in our company now. He's been in our company for a long time. It makes a phenomenal amount of money. Um, he said to me, he said, uh, you know, there is a number of prospects you should have to make a sale, and I don't know what it is. He said, but you may want to think about that. So, I didn't exactly know what he was talking about, but these were the days in which all the prospects were on three by five cards. How many of you still do that? Maybe I'm the only person that does that. I, I'm still not used to seeing everything on the computer screen. I still like things on cards. I still have a roll of that stuff on my desk with a bazillion cards in it. I, I still I like seeing them. I like seeing the picture of the person I'm talking to. And, and if it's on the computer screen, I, I just don't like stuff like that. But anyway, I started looking at the cards, uh, the prospects I have. I'd have the prospects that I'm showing houses to over here, and I'd have potential prospects in another card that I'd have another time, which I forgot. Here's what I found out. If I didn't have six prospects, I wouldn't have to say. 